Good evening. We have just gone through the Holy Week, its deathless drama of Christian suffering and redemption. And as luck would have it, our guest tonight is Mrs. Corazon Aquino, former president of the Philippines. Last February 4, in an evocative address before the Solo Parents National Convention, Mrs. Aquino spoke about her suffering. Mrs. Aquino, mother of five, widow of Nino Aquino, six-year chief of state, knows what suffering is. She was in prolonged agony after the assassination of Nino Aquino. She took over the cares of state for six years. Today, she bears another set of wounds, her daughter Chris Aquino's love affair with Philip Salvador, a married man. But Cory Aquino has made her peace with God, has left everything to God. This is part of the story she will tell tonight in reply to our questions. The entire story will also cover the world of politics. Here again, some events that are transpiring prior to the May 8 elections give her cause to suffer even more. Well, Winnie, you are a mother, a wife, children, and I would imagine that you are more, shall we say, privy to that kind of suffering than I am because I'm a man. I'm not sure that uh, just because you're a woman, you suffer more than a man. A man just doesn't have the guts to show <laughs> this that he's suffering. <laughs> but I think that uh, with respect to the president, she really has had more than her share of suffering. It's, it's amazing. A lot of the, my uh, friends who are in the lower economic uh, groups uh -huh, yeah. s tend to think that if you're wealthy, there's no way you can suffer. And yet here is, more and here is uh, President yeah. Corey, mm -hmm. who is by no means poor, uh -huh. and she has, uh, as you had said, she's had an assassination of her yes. husband, she's had coup attempts during her presidency, she's had all sorts of attacks on her person and her, on her character. Oh, for a presidency she never even wanted in the first place, huh? And then now she's got uh, the suffering of a mother with, for a child who has, uh, well, you know, to put it mildly, has, has gone astray. It's amazing when you look back, no? She has gone through a life of Gethsemane. Yeah, but it seems that her suffering never ends one after the other. And it's amazing how she copes with it. Well, and that's why yeah. it's, it's, it's nice as part of the Easter story to find out, you know, a real life, uh, a down-to-earth, now contemporary example of suffering and maybe forgiveness and ultimately redemption. So uh, let's, uh, let's get President Corey on okay. here. <laughs> okay. We'll get President Corey Aquino aboard firing line in several seconds. Stay with us. I'm sure that uh, before Winnie and myself, uh, well, we won't put you on the firing line, but we'll ask a lot of questions. Oh, we're certainly going to put her on the firing line. She's I, okay. Winnie. If there's anybody who knows how to, how to have grace under pressure, anyway, it's President Aquino. We, we do feel that uh, after the Holy Week, you would have a post-Easter message to give to the audience of firing line, so kindly. Well, first of all, uh, let me wish all of our listeners a happy, new, uh, happy Easter. And uh, I hope that we all went through a Holy Week uh, reminding ourselves of what Holy Week is all about. And uh, in fact, uh, giving ourselves to the Lord and joining in His sufferings for the redemption of mankind. Uh, Mrs. Aquino, the Holy Week gave you ample time to reflect, to commune with God. Tell him about your sufferings, about what is happening in your private world with regard to Chris, with regard to Philip. Uh, did you feel anything different when you commune with God during the Holy Week? Well, actually, even before Holy Week. Mm -hmm. And I think I finally found my peace before Christmas. I see. And um, before that, I was really in such pain. And um, I kept asking myself why and how. How did it happen? And what did I do wrong? And uh, what could I have done differently so that this would not have happened? But at a certain point, uh, talking with, uh, in particular, a Carmelite nun who I told see. me, you know, Cory, in this world, you have to accept 
that there are times when you are no longer in control and the best thing to do is to offer this problem to the Lord. And un until I did that, I really had so many sleepless nights and I really kept asking myself, was there something really that I forgot to do or was there something that I should not have done? You know, things like that. When, when you were asking yourself these questions, ma'am, what answers, what answers were, 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 I mean, what answers were you giving yourselves that caused you all this pain and suffering? In other words, did you blame yourself and why did you blame yourself? Well, when he, it was a shock to me, okay, that uh, I had done well and I think I have done well in so far as my three older daughters are concerned. And um, certainly I've always prided myself in really giving so much of myself to my children. And before this happened, uh, I guess I was really proud saying that, look, I have five very good children who have always been there for Ninoy, for me, and who have never caused me problems, at least not big problems like this one. And uh, I was also thinking that, um, well, could I have given too much attention to Chris? In other words, did you spoil her? Is, Probably, is that what yes, it is? Uh -huh. because she was the youngest. And you must remember, mm. she was only a year and a half when Inoy was imprisoned. And I guess not just me, but her brother, her sisters, my parents, and other relatives just felt so sorry for her. And we gave her all of this attention. But then Winnie, in the beginning, it did, it certainly paid off well. And if, I guess you both remember when she was only seven, she was campaigning for her father. And then all throughout the 23 years, you know, when she was a very dutiful daughter, I mean, I had no reason to complain. Mm -hmm. It was only when she met uh, Philip that suddenly the whole world changed and I no longer yeah. had that kind of influence that I used to have. But Did you see know, she, she, met, she met Philip under circumstances that may have gone beyond your control because she entered a different world, the world of movies, where morals are not exactly the same. And at the same time, her, she earned a fabulous amount of money and she became box office queen. Is it possible that her having experienced that kind of success, that kind of glamour, that kind of, see, of sitting on top of the world, gave her a sense of freedom that sort of spun her world out of control? I was thinking about that also, that uh, what if she had not entered I showbiz? See. But then on the other hand, Ever since you know, I um, share this problem with so many, I have found out that people who have never even uh, dreamed of going into showbiz have also had these problems. So it is not uh, the business that you are in. And I, I suppose uh, it's temptation. Uh, no matter uh, how hard we try, uh, we always have to be on guard uh, that sometimes something <coughs> happens where you lose yourself and uh, you are no longer able. Can you get, can you get your exact position? Send lang. Wait a second, the yeah, two of you, can you just uh, did, take turns? No, I'm asking. Like the, the audience of Prime uh -huh. to know her exact position, her exact, uh, the way she stands on this problem because she has never addressed a TV audience outside mm -hmm. of now. So what is your exact mm -hmm. position? Well, uh, when Chris told me yeah. that uh, she was really in love with him and I told her how impossible it was and I told her, Chris, I have told you this time and time again that uh, I believe and I thought you believed that marriage is sacred, that marriage is permanent and I just don't see that in this man that you are in love with and uh, it's not as if you know I'm just listening, listening to plain gossip, I mean it's there for all the world to see and so uh, I hope that you will still try and listen to me, and more importantly, to pray and ask for God's help. In fairness to Chris, she did try. Demona, what was her reaction when you, when you gave her all this list of all the possible negatives in this kind of affair? Well, both of us were crying, mm -hmm. uh, Winnie, and she kept saying, yes, I know, Mom, I know, Mom, but uh, I really just am so in love with him. And I said, well, uh, Chris, I've always also told you that uh, true love brings out the best in each other you know if you uh, want I've always thought that um, one of the signs to look for if you are both suited to each other is the best in you is brought out and I was saying that Chris I have not seen him bring out the best in you mm -hmm. and she was saying well mom it's just something that uh, 
I, I never thought would happen, but it has happened. And you know, she just kept saying that uh, she loved him. But I told her, uh, Chris, okay, maybe you've made a mistake, but there is still time. And um, sure. I, I all, but I told her whatever it is, uh, know that I love you, mm -hmm. and that uh, we are all ready to help you. And her sister has also told her that. When, well, when now, the Miss Cor Cor excuse me, we will mm -hmm. we'll pause for. A brief break. You open the next segment. <laughs> <laughs> Was she taking this uh, in sorrow, or was she was was she being defiant? What what was what was going on there? Uh, you felt you were losing control. Was did was it? Do you think that it was part of her growing up that she wanted to to show? Nah, hey, mom, I'm old enough to take care of myself. Please butt out. I think she was confused. And in fact, uh, you know how Madaldal Chris is. Oh, yeah. But during that time, uh, she was really not even talking or barely, uh, you know, saying anything in response to what I was asking so that, her. There was tremendous inner. Uh, yes, I'm sure. And uh, as again, in fairness to her, she was really being pulled in opposite directions. Uh, I think she still loves me. She still loves uh, the family. Mm. But at the same time. She is so enamored of this. Was there man. any attempt on the part of the family, on, on the part of the Aquinos or the Cojuancos, to go to Philip Salvador? Because, my goodness, here is Chris being uh, essentially m a much younger uh, girl, although, of course, she, she thought that she knew it all. No? Was there any attempt on the part of the family to go to Philip Salvador and say, lay off this girl? I think some, uh, some mutual friends had uh, done their bit, but... Walang uh, kwan, ha? Eh, siguro sabi nung isa, eh, look, this is a prize catch. Uh, uh, <laughs> Just go. Uh, well, I don't know. I, maybe those were not her words, but I imagine... Yeah. One last question, uh, uh, Teddy, before you, before you come in again. come <laughs> in. <laughs> no, what I wanted to ask President Corey is, I have never seen you uh, go so unstrung by this uh, with, uh, then, th then with this incident, I mean, I've seen you through coups. I saw you through the uh, through the assassination of Minoy, and and you were talagang mother courage sort of thing. And here comes uh, this thing over which really you have no control, and all of a sudden you fall apart. You, well, I mean, well, I didn't fall, fall apart. apart. Com com I mean, <laughs> in other words, yung talagang iyakan and 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 But and you never saw me uh, 24 hours a day, Winnie. So oh. during the coup attempts, I mean, okay, you saw me uh, when I was prepared to to face the public, and but I also had very disquieting moments uh -huh. and. Um, Certainly, uh, again, in the coup attempts, I really had very little control. Uh -uh. And, uh, but it also hit me bad. And then in the assassination, you didn't see me when I was in Boston, yes. when I was crying my heart mm -hmm. out. And at night, when I was alone, I would never wanted my children to see me in so much pain and you know uh, crying because I didn't want them to lose uh, her. Lang, ako naman, ako naman, ako naman, ako naman. Why? <laughs> <Tandali lang. laughs> Dar darating po ang panahon na si Chris po is going to deliver a child who is going to be your grandchild. Kung dumating po yung panahon na yan, oh, okay. ano po ang inyong magiging feeling? Siyempre ho, as a grandmother, gusto niyong nakita yung bata, pero as a Christian and taking the position that you have taken, ano ang gagawin niyo? Alam mo, Teddy, bago umalis si Chris ng bahay, sinabi ko sa kanya, Chris, kung kailangan mo ako, kung kailangan mo mga kapatid mo, ang kailangan mo lang gawin ay tumawag ka at pupunta kami. Pero kung hindi ka tatawag, hindi kami pupunta dahil ayaw namin malagay sa alanganin na baka ayaw mo kaming naroroon. Kanyang baliwanag yun. Kung pupunta po si Chris sa bahay nyo, ay. at dalala niya yung baby, oh, sina okay, ma okay baliwanag yun. Oh, sinabi ko, ikaw, Chris, at saka uh -huh. magiging anak mo, you will always be welcome. I see, I see. But definitely, I will not welcome. Uh -huh. You know, who? Uh -huh. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, ang, ang, pero kung, kung you know that she is in trouble, eh, iintayin niyo pa bang 
tatawag siya o baka you know kasi hindi ba kagaya she is the, she is your child most likely noy na talagang napakatigas ng ulo i mean knowing that uh, would you use uh, would you use that as a as a sort of rationale to say hey this girl is in trouble i better go to her because she will never never come to ah, me. She's hindi, like hindi. her father dahil uh, kilala ko si Chris you know, and uh, when she was in trouble, in fact, when uh, reports came to me that she was bleeding, I immediately asked Balsi and Viel also uh, to go to see her. I told her, Bakit hindi kayo? Because kilalang kilala ako. Uh, uh, if I had gone to the building where she lives, Nako. Eh, at once, uh, uh -huh. para bang in-announce ko na sa buong mundo na uh -huh. nandun. Uh -huh. So, nakiusap ako kay Balsi, sa ko, Balsi, please do this for me. And in fact, uh, Bolsi said, yes, ma'am. And uh, I said, if she is really in uh, that condition and she needs our help, tell her uh -uh. that we are ready to do things for her. So when Bolsi went and, and Viel accompanied her, sabi ni Bolsi, oh, Chris, pinapunta kami rito ng mami para makita ka kung may kailangan ka. And then Chris cried and told her ate, sabi ni ate, oh, papdalina niyo ako sa ospital. So uh, that's when I called Alran Bengson, mm -hmm. and I told Alran, Alran, uh, can you please come over? I'd like to discuss something with you. So he immediately he came, and I told him, Alran, Chris is bleeding, and uh, we'd like to bring her to a hospital. Can you arrange for some hospital where she will be given excellent care, but at the same time, you know, not to make this so public. So, alam ni Chris yon. In fact. Uh, even without asking. Then after that, I told her when she was at home after uh, the hospital examination, I said, Chris, it seems as if you did not appreciate mm -hmm. what your sisters and your brother did. You know, all of us were there, and still uh, you did not show your appreciation. And she didn't say anything. So I said, Alamo, Chris, um, from now on, unless you call us, we won't go anymore because. Uh, you seem to make us feel and masyado kami nakialam. So, uh, at any rate, she knows that all she has to do is to call mm -mm. and we will be there for her. Follow up sa sinabi ni, ni, ni uh, at saka sa tinanong ni Winnie, na si Chris has so many traits of Ninoy. In fact, a lot of people are saying, including your mother-in-law, that uh, si Chris is the Ninoy female Ninoy. Aquino, Ninoy na Ninoy. Uh, is it possible that those traits of hers drove her to the kind of decision making, to the kind of a sense of adventure. She looks for the edge of the cliffs or she, she finds excitement. Hindi naman, ano, look. Na, <laughs> look, uh, huwag naman natin isali na si Ninoy dito, ano? <laughs> and uh, whatever Chris does, look, she's 24. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's intelligent. Very. Uh, she knows what's right, what's wrong. And at a certain point in one's life, you do not blame the parents anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe if she were a teenager, then yes, maybe people could say, si Cory kasi pinabayan, o si Ninoy uh, hindi, uh, was not around to tell her what to do and what not to do. But 24 na eh. At saka, as I said, she's intelligent. Mm -hmm. And she knows very well what is right and what is wrong. Pero so let's leave Ninoy out of this. But ang ho naman, na yun ay napapansin ho namin, ibang iba si Chris sa mga kapatid niya. Well, she... They don't like publicity, hindi sila mahilig ng glamour, hindi sila mahilig ng... Ah, characteristic siya. Ah, yes, okay. She is... She is like Nino in the sense that she enjoys the public life. Hindi ko ang sasabihin. Oh, okay. Yun na lang. Yun na lang. Kasi... Kaibigan mo naman si Nino, and that's patay na iasawa ko eh. Huwag na natin isali dito sa kaguluhan na ito. But anyway, siguro, 24 doing very well uh, in her career and really feeling as if she can do it all and uh, you're correct in the sense that she is really daring mm -hmm. and uh, unlike her sisters and her brother who are more like me mm -hmm. and uh, but all of us really in spite of what is going on now as I said all Chris has to do is to call and we will be there in fact any of my children who will need anything at any point all of us will rally Malala ko po, yung, uh, nung press secretary po ako, nung natrabaho po sa, in your administration, ang dami po mga periodista, foreign newsmen, na humihingi ng interview mm -hmm. sa mga Aquino children. Ayaw niya. Ayaw magpa-interview, ayaw pagparitrato, just, just wanted to stay to see in this oh, year. Uh, ayaw sila. Mrs. Hmm. President, nung... At mas mabuti yun, di ba? Oo, mabuti. When, when, uh, 
there is a distinction between your reactions to this to your troubles when you were president and now that you are no longer president is this is this reaction of yours something that you have said i will allow the public to see because i am no longer president or or talagang have you changed and you have decided na i want to share this with the public because maybe it will help them but you know during the assassination you were also very uh, very calm, cool, and collected in your public moments. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now you are no longer president, and you are no longer uh, that calm or that cool or that collected. You are willing to share. Mm -hmm. what, what, has, uh, what has created this change? Well, first of all, there were so many misperceptions, you know, like me shutting the door on Chris and uh, just, you know, so to speak, uh, sending her away, and which was never true. Mm -hmm. And also because I wanted to share this with other mothers who may be suffering similar uh, problems mm -hmm. and who may want, I don't know, they might want to know how I'm coping with this. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, I believe that uh, by sharing my experiences with them, by telling them how prayer mm -hmm. has done much in order to bring me the peace that I once had, uh, then I would perhaps not only be serving my own um, interest, but more importantly, uh, sharing with everybody the importance of bringing God into the problem. We'll pause for <laughs> Sabino, uh, magpalit po ulit tayo ng subject. Aakyat po tayo ng ibang kalsada, ibang highway. Ito po ang highway na ito eh, very interesting because uh, ito po ang highway na pupunta po sa May 8 of this year, the elections. At uh, alam namin na meron po kayong in-endorse na lima. Pito, pito. Pito na nga yan. No? Pito, 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 pito. Uh -huh. Maaari po bang inyong i- Sabihin. Sabihin ko sino po yung pitong yun. <laughs> Mabuti, tinanong mo na ako ah. yan, Teddy. Ano? <laughs> uh, Unang-una, uh, sinabi ko nga, uh, in-endorse ko si Frank Drilon. Ah. Alam naman nyo, siya ay uh, naging Secretary of Labor, tapos Secretary of Justice, and then Executive mm. Secretary. Uh, pangalawa, pinakiusap ko din si Nene Pimentel, uh, nanggaling din sa ating cabinet yan, at uh, siya ang responsible for the Local Autonomy Code. Yes. Uh, pangatlo ay si uh, Marcelo Fernand, dating Chief Justice, katulong din natin sa pagbabalik ng ating demokrasya. Uh, pangapat ay si Monching Mitra, uh, kasama ni Ninoy na nakakulong sa Fort Bonifacio, at talaga din malaki ang tinulong at uh, tiniis uh, nung panahon ng uh, dictatorship. Tapos ang panglima ay si Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, a truly outstanding uh, senator. And then pang-anim si June Magsaysay, uh, dating congressman yan at uh, isang uh, magaling na businessman ngayon. At uh, palagay ko ay malaki din ang uh, maipaglilingkod sa ating mamamayan kung mahahalal sa Senado. And last but not the least is Serge Osmeña who suffered imprisonment for five years and even when he was already living in exile was still working very hard in order to bring about uh, the restoration of our democracy. Okay, we know your list of seven. Sino po naman ang no-no list nyo? Mas siyempre kayo yung no-no list. Kanya nga, pag ako ay inaanyayahan na magtalumpati sa iba't ibang lalawigan, sinasabi ko, unang-unang huwag natin kalimutan kung ano ang nangyari nung panahon ng diktador. At alam natin lahat, hindi lamang si Ninoy, kung hindi libo-libo ang nakulong, ang iba napatay, at hindi na nakita man lamang ang kanilang mga remains. Kanya, isipin natin sino ba ang ngayon na, na kandidato na marahil ay baka sumunod dun sa uh -huh. ginawa ng kanyang tatay, yan si Marcos Jr. Kanya, kumaari po sana, tandaan natin yun. Tapos, uh, alam natin lahat, dahil kayong dalawa ay nado sa cabinet nun, hirap na hirap tayo dun sa mga co-attempts. At uh, ang ganda-ganda na sana ng palakad at ang ating ekonomiya ay talagang uh, umaabante na ng husto ay eh, pagkatapos pinahirapan tayo ng mga co-attempts na yan. O sino ba ang, uh, ang dapat nating tandaan na um, talagang responsable para dyan sa co-attempts na yan? Si Onasan. Yes. Kanya sana yung dalawang yun, Onasan at Marcos, na talagang pinahirapan. Hindi lamang si Cory Aquino, kung hindi ang ating bayan. 
na hindi dapat naman mahalal yan. Eh, ayun lang dalawa lang ba? Hmm. Ayan, lang, ayan dalawa lang ba ang nono ninyo, Mrs. President? Alam mo, mahirap yung marami kasi nasabi, ano, yung, yung dalawang yon basta tandaan lamang sana ng mga uh -huh. nanonood sa atin, ay eh, malaking bagay ninyo. Kasi, kasi ang, ang nagtataka ho ako, kasi, you know, you are known to be very, uh, very moral and very virtuous. Eh, meron ho dyan mga kandidato na na uh, is not are not known for their morality or their virtue. Uh, sino? Uh, sino? Aba, eh, di, eh, di si... <laughs> <laughs> no, what I meant is, very frankly, Mrs. President, uh, would you consider endorsing uh, uh, somebody like Baby Arena? And then, naghito na ako eh, di ba? Pito-pito ito aking uh, inendorso. Hmm. Uno-una, hindi na ako pangulo ngayon. Uh, ano? At, uh, pero pito nakikiusap... lang eh, pero lima ang hindi, merong 12... Alam mo, Winnie, pag nakikiusap ka, hindi pwedeng labing dalawa. Sabihin naman, ito winning na ito, dami-daming pinakikiusap. Ang kapal, ano? Uh -huh. So, tama na itong aking pito-pito. Okay, okay. doon sa lima, um, doon sa lima na, na hindi nyo in-endorse, would you be happy if Baby Arenas, for example, were voted in? I will be happy if all my seven candidates win. <laughs> At uh, Winnie, huwag mo nang eh, sinasali okay, pa ko sino-sino okay. sino ito. Uh, Naririto ako ngayon, binigyan niyo ako ng pagkakataon. Yung pito-pito ko, ang talagang pinakikiusap ko. At balik po tayo kay uh, Bongbong Marcos. Manyari, mukhang naiingganyan niya ang mga kabataan, ang uh, citizenry na sinasabi niya na walang diktadura ang nangyari, hindi totoo yun. At sinasabi niya, yung tatay niya rin, hindi diktador. At sinasabi niya, yung tatay niya ay pinakamagaling at pinakamahusay na presidente na nakuha ng Pilipinas, ng ating bayan. Eh bakit po maraming kumakagat? Bakit po maraming nalilinlang? Ano po nangyayari sa mga... Bakit po nangyayari? Uh, Unang-una, Teddy, marami hmm. ba talaga nalilinlang? Eh, nasabi ko no? uh, uh, Dahil uh, alam naman natin, magaling yung hmm. mga taong yan sa hmm. kanilang propaganda. Oh. At alam din natin, magaling sila na magpapakunta ng mga tao doon na siguro sisigaw-sigaw o uh, talagang lalapit at uh, pakikita na talagang gustong-gusto nila. Uh, granted that uh, they still have their followers, pero... Uh, ako'y naniniwala, the Filipino voter is an intelligent voter. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is to remind them mm -hmm. about what happened, and especially the young people. Dahil, Winnie, baka napakabata nung araw mm -hmm. uh, nitong mga new voters, baka hindi nila nalalaman kung ano nangyari nung mga panahon ng diktador. Pero may argument ho dyan kasi si, uh, si uh, Onasan eh. Ang sinasabi niya, oo nga, pwede, you know, sa mga krime na ginawa ko, dapat ako bitayan, bitayin. Pero ang dami-dami dyan, mga dapat bitayin rin hindi hindi sila binibitay at uh, at in fact are very very much in power. Oh, oh paano yan? I mean, ano, ano ano ang sagot niyo diyan? Unang-una, maliwanag na maliwanag naman eh kung hmm. ano yung ginawa niya. At uh, hindi na kailangan siguro na uh, magdala pa ng katakot-takot na ebidensya dahil ang daming ang daming namatay, hmm. uh, marami na sugatan, yung aking anak na si Noynoy na baril. Hmm. At Uh, siya mismo sinasabi sa kanyang interviews nung araw na talagang gusto niya ibagsak ang pamahalaan. Mm -hmm. So, meron na tayong konstitusyon. Mm -hmm. At uh, siya rin ay sa palagay ko, o, ewan ko kung talagang uh, mm -hmm. nag-pledge siya ng allegiance to the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Pero, ang uh, para bang, so, kunyari, Winnie, meron kang ginawang uh, hindi tama, tapos sasabihin, oh, Okay lang yan, dahil kasi si Teddy naman meron din ginawang hindi tama. Kanya, mm -hmm. yan ang excuse niya Ayon. ngayon. Mm -hmm. Oo. E di, ano naman mangyayari dito sa ating uh, bayan na ito? Yung bang-ibang yan yun ay kumakandidato rin. Mm -hmm. At uh, ang maliwanag na maliwanag sa akin, at siguro naman sa lahat ng mga naninirahan dito sa ating bayan noong panahon ng mga co-attempts, mm -hmm. lahat ng kasamaan at talagang yung dugo na umagos dahil sa kanyang ginawa. Sa I mean, sa... Fearless forecast to fearless forecast. Mm. Ano po ang forecast niya sa senatorial election? 7-5, 6-6, 5-7, 7-8. Uh, okay, kung hindi nyo masakit po, sino po ang inaakala nyo magiging top 3 or top 4? Uh, sa palagay ko si Gloria Macapagal will be among the top 3. I see. Oo. And um, another sure winner I have been told is uh, Frank Drilon. Oo. Um, It, basta, I go back to my seven. Ano? Inaasahan ko na yung pitong yun ay uh, mananalo. 
at uh, bibigyan ng pagkakataon ng ating mga butante na maglingkod sa kanila sa pamamagitan ng paghalal sa kanila sa Senado. Oh. Last week, Mrs. President, nag-launch kayo nung, nung parang uh, campaign against, uh, against Marcos and Onasan nung sa AIM yata yun. Eh, uh, ano, how are you going to follow through with this, uh, nag, ando doon kayo sa launching, hindi ba, ng mga kababaihan. How are you going to follow through on this? Uh, alam mo, uh, ako ngayon nagpapasalamat na hindi ako talaga ang nag-initiate nito at uh, yung mga kababaihan na nakaisip nito dahil uh, ang, sa palagay nila, yun na nga, yung mga batang botante ay hindi natatandaan at hindi nalalaman kung ano ang mga kasamaan na nangyari nung panahon ng diktador. Kanya, uh, nakita ko nga yung isang comic book na pinaliliwanag doon kung ano ang kasalanan uh, nung diktador at kung, din ang, kung ano rin ang kasalanan nung mga nagko-attempt. Kanya, ito siguro ay uh, sa pamamagitan nito ay mapapaliwanag natin sa mga kabataan kung ano ang pa posibleng mangyari pag nahalal itong mga kandidato so, mga hindi ngampanya, naniniwala sa demokrasya. Mga ngampanya ho kayo for your pito-pito at tapos mga ngampanya rin kayo against mm -hmm. these two particular uh, candidates. Dahil sa pagkampanya ko dito sa pito, sabi ko, ay uh, nasubukan na natin sila at talagang tapat sila sa demokrasya. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, on the other side, ito naman yung mga taong nakita na rin natin na talagang ayaw sa demokrasya. Nakikinabang sa demokrasya. Yun ang masakit doon, Winnie. Eh. Mm. Uh, nakikinabang sa ating pagbabalik ng demokrasya, pero hindi tapat sa demokrasya. Sa inyo yung nakakala, uh, Mrs. Aquino, ito pong campaign at ang eleksyon na mangyayari sa ikawalo ng uh, Mayo, itong taon nito, eh, inakala niyo bang magiging clean, orderly, honest, peaceful, o maaari hong makaroon ng mga incidents of violence. Nakakatakot po yung nangyari sa, 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 sa Mindanao, sa Sambuanga. At maaari po itong mga medyo nawawalaan po ng uh, bait uh -huh. na nagpapatay po ng tao. Baka i-carry po nila kanilang violence. Uh, tinatawag na northward, hindi lang sa Mindanao. Hindi ko ba nakakatakot yan? Hindi, kanya. Nasa sa atin ang lahat yun. Ano. At uh, minsan pa ay uh, gusto kong uh, pasalamatan ang iyong mabuting uh, asawa si Chris Monso dahil uh, sa kanyang pamamalakad sa Comelec ay talaga nagkaroon tayo ng isang malinis at uh, maayos na halala noong 1992 at um, sinasabi ko nga nasa sa atin na rin mm. yun eh huwag natin isipin na ang pamahalaan ng bahala mm. na magkaroon tayo ng malinis na halalan dahil bawat isang butante ay kinakailangan una-una bumoto at pangalawa ay talaga naman na tumulong upang magkaroon tayo ng isang malinis at maayos na halalan. On that note, we'll pause for another break. Winnie opens up in the next segment. <laughs> As a result of the Sambuanga massacre, there are uh, suggestions and strong recommendations na baka ipospone yung election sa Mindanao. In other words, they will wait until the elections, the, other, uh, the, the rest of the nation elects, and then they are going to concentrate on Mindanao. What do you think of that? Medyo mahirap yun. Ano? Dahil uh, lalong-lalo na isipin natin kung sino yung number 11 at number 12. <laughs> uh, di siyempre yung may, mayroon pang chance na to get into the magic 12, eh, masyadong mahirap na yung labanan kung tapos na yung halalan in most parts of the country. Kanya inaasahan ko na makakagawa ng paraan para sabay-sabay ng lahat boboto. Oo. Meron dito hong note from the studio audience na meron tayong maliit na studio audience dito. Eh, nakalagay dito eh, si uh, uh, Mr. Onasan daw eh, wala pa sa posisyon eh, nanggugulo na. Papano kung nakaupo? Uh, do you uh, agree with that? Oo, dahil kasi parang uh, yun na nga, sabi ko, gustong um, pagka it is to his benefit, then he agrees, you know, with the democratic process. Mm -hmm. Pero pag hindi nasunod ang gusto, eh talagang lalabag na sa batas at uh, gagawin na kung ano yung para sa kanyang sarili. Uh, masyado yung sarili lamang ay niintindi at hindi yung kapakanan ng mamamayan. Mr. Aquino, let's go back to the subject of suffering, redemption, the passion that one goes through suffering. Yung suffering po ninyo in the light of 
ano pong napagdaanan nyo at mga tao na kausap nyo, mga madre, mga pare, mga advisors. Ano po ang tinatawag na mystic of suffering? Meron po mga divine meaning and suffering? Uh, siguro, no, tayong lahat mm. ay kristyano mm. at uh, isipin na lamang natin na uh, Jesus Christ, Opo. na Diyos, ay uh, kinailangan pang pumunta dito sa ating mundo upang ialay ang sarili niyang buhay, upang tayong lahat ay uh, masalba niya at uh, makapunta tayo sa ating uh, pinaroroonan sa panghabang buhay ay pang for eternity. So, uh, I think what is very clear is that Jesus Christ showed us that we who profess to be Christians should live uh, our lives like He did. And suffering, in fact, will be the, I guess, the link in the same way that He suffered even if He were not guilty of anything, and certainly uh, He was God. If we are uh, true Christians, then we must accept suffering as a part of our lives in and with Christ. Kanya, wag nating isipin if we are suffering, ay naku, uh, siguro parusa sa akin ito, o ini iniisip mo, bakit ako uh, nagdudusa ng ganito, anong kasalanan ko? Isipin na lang natin, walang kasalanan ang Panginoong Diyos. Ngunit iniisip niya, para sa kabutihan ng ating mga, um, uh, of all people, na kinailangan na magpunta siya rito at iyalay nga niya yung kanyang buhay para eh, sa ating lahat. You know, do, sa, 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 in the midst of all his suffering, uh, Jesus Christ asked his father to forgive yes. uh, the, those who, who sinned against him or who did him wrong. Um, sa, sa inyong palagay, ma'am, eh, na, na forgive niyo na ba si Chris? Oo. Oh, even na... Uh, I don't think there was, if you mean by forgiveness, uh, did I stop loving her? Oh. I never did. Uh -oh. And uh, I know that there will come a time when she will be back and that uh, she will finally uh, make peace, not only with me, but more importantly with the Lord. Because uh -oh. what she has done is wrong, as you all know. What, what about Philip? What do you, what do you feel about, about forgiving well, Philip? Um, do you think that's a little much beyond human... Uh, capacity to do at this point? Una, una, the way I look at forgiveness, it is necessary for the person who has done wrong to make amends and to ask for forgiveness and to be truly sorry for having done such a thing. But, wala ako nakikita dyan. Siguro, napaka-complicated nga itong kay Philip na ito dahil meron pa siyang familia. He has not wronged only me or uh, for that matter and uh, speaking president. of forgiveness and making amends i remember the first one of the first acts nung kayo yung presidente sinabi nga niyo yon you know f in order to forgive there must be some uh, rec uh, some some uh, what do you call it some reparation reparation eh ngayon eh yung hindi ba yung PCGG eh, nag nagkakaroon sila ng negotiations with the Marcoses na 75% sige na everything will be forgiven basta 75% of all that wealth goes to the government 25% goes to the to the Marcoses, they can keep it. Uh, oh, Pero nung panahon ko, hindi ganun. <laughs> uh, dahil lang, sinasabi ko, yung mga, those who have committed lesser wrongs, okay, or who were not directly involved, uh -huh. or who were, as I said, the, the little guys, uh, then if they return, and uh, then they can be forgiven. But for those who really rob the country blind, uh, we cannot allow them to just... Going go back to suffering, uh, uh, Ms. Aquino, you are suffering, I suppose. Actually, uh, can we stop that? Oh, uh, gusto ko I have suffering, suffered. The but, suffering uh, makes you a better person. You gonna gusto I think so. Gusto well, uh -huh. it depends. Uh, I mean, like Nino used to tell me, and daming nakulong ng panahon mm. ng martial law. And uh, I, I can truthfully say that after Nino's uh, incarceration, he emerged a much better man, a mm. much better Christian. But uh, it all depends on how you accept suffering. You have to accept suffering, as I said, as a part of your life in and with Christ. But if you are going to complain, if you are going to uh, not accept uh, suffering, and you are saying, why am I being singled mm -hmm. out for suffering? Then you will emerge a better person yeah, mm -hmm. instead of a better person. No, no, no. I said during your speech before the Solo Parents Association last February, I uh, you po si St. Francis of uh, Assisi. Assisi. Yes. At kayo po inagulat na malaman na si St. Francis of Assisi <laughs> na ang dami dami ng mong suffering uh, was even asking for more. Ano po ang mystic nun? Bakit po nakagin na? Because uh, hmm. I think it is uh, the thinking that uh, 
as you suffer, mm. you become that much closer to the Lord. I see. Because each suffering pure is a purification, actually. Oh, no, no. And so you have you advance, I guess, in the purifying process. But as I said, nako, dear Jesus, hindi ako magrereklamo pero tama na naman, ano? Video, relax mo na tayo. Sabi nga nila eh, si 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 Mother Teresa was making cuento na ayun nga kinocomfort niya yung isang nagsasuffer e eh, sabi niya, you know the more you suffer that's a sign that God loves you e eh, sabi ho nung babae, please will you please tell Jesus not to love me so, so much, much. Oh, oh, ganun nga <laughs> but you know when we first started here, sinabi niyo when we were talking to you about suffering and redemption sabi niyo sa akin eh, oy pwede ba wag hindi naman ako palaging mater dolorosa oh, oh, there have been joys yes, many and joys. Easter is a, is a season of joy oh, oh, oh. please tell me what are the joys that you have that, that you have gotten, say even from Christ or yes, whatever. well, uh, yes, I'd like to see that that side of it. the joys of being a wife and mother, and now a grandmother, uh -uh. and then uh, then the other joys, you know, being named Woman of the Year by Time Magazine. My uh -huh. goodness, I'm talagang super happy ako noon dahil oh. sa buong buhay ko ni hindi ko alam na maisusulat ako sa Time Magazine. Eh, biruin mo naman yun nangyari yon. Then, of course, the joy and the uh, fulfillment of having been, uh, or at least uh, at the forefront of the restoration of our democracy. Na, nung araw pa sabi na sabi si Ninoy, nako, paano natin maibabalik ang demokrasya? I'm afraid that our country might have to go into a civil war. Mm -hmm. And it was Ninoy who was wanting to be president. I never wanted to mm -hmm. be president. And Ninoy saying also, nako, after six months, whoever succeeds Marcos will be booted out. Mm -hmm. After six months, di tuwan-tuwa naman ako, Winnie, at <laughs> pangulo pa ako. At lalong-lalo na, no, nakatapos ako ng aking pagiging pangulo, and I was able to transfer power in a very orderly manner. Can you say that your joys and your sufferings are more intense, more felt by you? Manyari po, naging presidente kayo for six years. Meron bang difference? Kung hindi ko ay nagpresidente at natanggap niyo itong suffering nito, meron bang difference between having been and not having been? Well, certainly, having been president mm -hmm. makes a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. And even now, you know, that's another of my joys. I still get perks when yes. I am abroad. <laughs> na hanggang ngayon, hindi ako marunong na fifila-fila dyan sa mga immigration or customs of other uh, nations. And when I am ab abroad, I even get uh, motorcycle escorts. Wow. So, uh, ano ba, you know, I'm still human and I certainly of enjoy course. all of uh. these uh, perks. So, there have been more joys than sufferings in my life. It's just that, Siguro masyadong matindi rin itong aking trials na and also because having been in the public eye, everybody knows. Ano yun ang iniisip ko, maraming katulad ko na ina na naranasan itong aking pagdudusang ito. Kanya lamang, uh, kung hindi sila masyadong kilala, private na lamang yung kanilang yes, suffering. Yes. Eh itong akin talagang halos lahat at uh, gulat na gulat ako hanggang daw sa Espanya at saka sa England yung kanilang parang equivalent of the People magazine eh yung isang kaibigan ko sabi nakita daw yung retrato ko daw sabi ano naman ang ginagawa ng retrato ni Cory nung pala tungkol kay Chris we we'll pause for another break stay with us Sabi nyo na meron kayong ina-endorse na seven senatorial candidates at meron kayong no-no list. Eh, parang for the first time, you took an act active role in the political life of this country. Magmula po nung nag-retire uh, kayo from, I mean, you got down from the presidency in 1992. Ang inakala po nung napakaraming tao na between now and 1998, marami po mga tinatawag na events na kukulo uh, at magiging mga mushroom cloud, at meron mga balak ang mga oposisyon, mga natao in power to, you know, to change the political system of this country. Eh, yun ang nangyari po sa, sa Mindanao, maaari pong gumula ang panahon. Meron, maaari ho bang magkakaroon ng circumstance, event that may compel you, whether you like it or not, to take an active role in Philippine politics and on what issue? Well, uh, there has been talk, of course, mm -hmm. about the switch to a parliamentary system. Mm -hmm. And I have already declared that uh, I will campaign against a parliamentary form of government 
First, for the reason that Filipinos want to vote directly for their president. And I don't think we should give up on that. And uh, as um, I have told many, basta pag nag-umpisa yan, ay talagang kakampanya ko laban dyan. One more follow-up, then it's yours. It's for one follow-up. Marami po ako naririnig ng mga tao. At dyan sa mga tao po niya, eh meron pong mga tutul po sa inyo ng araw. Ito pong mga taon to, iniisip nila na kung wala pong leader na talagang napapagkatiwalaan, malakas, at saka pinatawag na moral authority, ang sinasabi po nila, baka maaari raw kayo makumbins na gumulit ulit to take a second turn at the presidency. Alam mo, thank you very much for whoever those friends are. But ang paniwala ko ay talagang ako ay kinailangan lamang nung transition from a dictatorship to a democracy. At ang talagang pinag-aabalahan ko ng panahon ngayon ay makapagtayo ng tinatawag kong Aquino Center na magkakaroon tayo ng Institute for People, Power, and Development na tutulungan natin yung mga kooperatiba at iba pang mga NGOs in the matter of preparing their project studies. At ang ginagawa nga ng Aquino Foundation ay dinodocument namin yung mga successful programs and projects para yung mga ibang kooperatiba na gustong tularan, yung nagawa nila ay mas madadalian dahil meron na kami documentation. Pero gusto ko talaga magkaroon ng Aquino Center. We will have a museum and library at doon ko ilalagay ang memorabilia, both of Ninoy and myself. At magpapalabas din kami ng mga dokumentaryo tungkol din sa kay Ninoy at sa aking sarili. May balik nga ho natin sa joy and suffering. I, I, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Ma'am, uh, you were talking about the joys attached to the presidency. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, did you ever think that perhaps, supposing, did, you, did it occur to you or did it cross your mind that if you had not been president, maybe this would not have happened to Chris? Nakakross ba sa mind nyo yun? Hindi. Ang naisip ko lamang talaga yung kung sakaling hindi siya nag-showbiz. Yun ang nalagay sa isip ko. Dahil yung aking pagiging Pangulo, even before I became President, kilalang kilala na yan si Chris. In fact, during the 1978 Laban Campaign, mas maraming nagkilala kay Chris kesa sa akin. Dahil siya ang nagbibigay ng mga talumpati noon. Eh ngayon eh, you know, just a... Just a yung speculative question. If you had to do it all over again and you were asked to choose um, between getting the presidency and keeping Chris out of the clutches of Philip Salvador, uh, what would you choose? But then, Winnie, I told you that uh, my being president had nothing to do with the Chris Philip uh, affair. Uh -huh. So uh, there is no choice there. No, uh, you, you. And, uh, also, the reason why I ran for the presidency was uh, because it was thought then that I alone could unite the opposition uh -huh. and it was necessary to only have one candidate uh -huh. against the dictator. Now, a lot of mothers, all of us, all, all of us mothers have, have always had this, this experience with children. At some point in time, we despair because they have done something that we did not want to do. Meron ba kayong message na for, for mothers uh, uh, as to how to how to um, cope with uh, this kind of thing which causes which causes a lot of grief and mm -hmm. and heartbreak as far as mothers and of course fathers are concerned well uh, my answer to that would be prayer and it has been prayer that has seen me through all of my difficult uh, trials and it is prayer that keeps me going also and i truly believe that uh, since god loves chris even more than i do he will take care and that uh, at this point in my life, I've done everything possible. I've certainly prayed a lot. So I leave the rest to the Lord. Yes, okay, now let's talk about the church. And when I talk church, I mean the Roman Catholic Church because 85% of uh, Filipinos are Roman Catholics. Ano pong nakikita nyo na role po ng simbahan tungkol po sa pag-uunlad ng ating bayan? Minari, aking napupuna po at lahat naman, marami, na ang simbahan po, especially Jaime Cardinal Sin has been taking a much more, shall we say, eloquent, more assertive, more firm position on quite a number of political matters. Yung babae mabuti o hindi mabuti para sa bayan? Sa palagay ko, dahil lalong-lalo na sa ibang mga bayan, yung mga malilit na bayan sa ating mga lalawigan, ang nilalapitan nila ang ating mga pare at tinatanong nila na ipaliwanag sa kanila ang mga political issues. Kanya, Inaasahan ko na mga pari sa ating simbahan ay 
uh, nagbabasa at uh, talaga namang uh, gumagawa ng paraan upang malaman nila talaga kung ano itong mga issues na ito upang mapaliwanag naman nila sa kanila. Kung bakit na-influensya ang simbahan po well, because, sa uh, electorates na may merong content? I suppose uh, for people who turn to them and uh -huh. ask them to explain certain things. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is not for for them, you know, to, to tell them to vote for one candidate or the other. But I think in the matter of explaining you know, about the qualifications of certain candidates. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but give the final decision to the voters. Sa, sa halala na ito, Mrs. President, saan probinsya kayo pupunta para mga panya? Meron ba kayong, uh, meron ba kayong schedule? Mga uh, favorite local government officials? Uh, uh, Unang-una yun sa, sa Tarlac, siyempre, dahil yun ang aking lalawigan. Uh, pero sa Pampanga, dahil uh, doon ay kumakampanya ako para kay Governor Bren Giao. Excuse me. At... Uh, kumakampanya din ako sa sa Bulacan para kay um, Governor Pagdanganan at saka si kay Congressman uh, Boje Cabochan. Namimiligro ba sila? Hindi naman. Ah. Pero pinakiusapan ako at uh, natatandaan ko pa rin naman la, ito mga katulong ko sa ating pagbabalik ng demokrasya at malaki ang tulong na nagawa nila sa para kan, sa para sa kanilang lalawigan katulad ng Pampanga. Uh, in spite of the lahar, in spite of the locust infestation, mm -hmm. I, uh, the economy is still doing well in mm -hmm. Pampanga. So I think we should give credit to uh, Governor Giao, and I hope the voters of Pampanga will remember this and will uh, re-elect him. Mm -hmm. eh, dun sa Tarlac, ho, eh, hindi, may, hindi ba na you are under criticism because uh, Ting Ting is governor and uh, Peping is congressman and, uh, you know, in other words, parang Tarlac has become a Kohwanko fifth dam. Uh, how would you defend yourself against such, uh, such uh, criticisms? Alam mo, nasa mamamayan yan eh. Kung ayaw nila talaga sa mga kohwangko, di hindi nila iboboto. Mm -hmm. At uh, meron naman mga other options. Ano? Hindi naman yung katulad ng panahon ng diktador na wala kang other eh, hindi ba Hindi ba si Aping Yap na who used to be very, very close to you, eh, all of a sudden is in Pampanga, has, ay, in Tarlac has become so bitter uh, that para daw, ano yun, you, you, were, uh, you did not appreciate him. Alam mo, nagpunta sa akin si Aping. Oh. At sinabi nga niya sa akin Wait, na... Uh, alam mo, uh, Cory, wala naman akong laban sa iyo at hindi ko rin kinakalaban si Piping. Tapos, sinabi ko, mabuti pa dyan mag-usapan kayo yung dalawa ni Piping. At sinabi ni Piping sa kanya, Aping, kung totoo, hindi mo kami kinakalaban, maari mo bang sabihin uh, publicly na sinusuportahan mo ako at saka si Ting Ting. Tapos sinabi niya, oo, asas gagawin ko yan, pero hindi naman niya ginawa yung all. But he's not running. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry again. It's curtain time. Kakasarapan na naman tayo. We are compelled to come to a close. Oh. So, Winnie and myself would appreciate it, and also the audience of Firing Line, if you can give a parting message of one minute. Well, uh, mm -hmm. let me thank you again, uh, Teddy and Winnie, for inviting me to the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, I hope that all of us had a happy Easter, and all of us remembered to thank the Lord for all the blessings that have been given to us personally and also to our country. And I hope that all of us will continue to pray and to help each other. We have to pray for each other and we have to help each other. Thank so, you very much, Ms. Aquino. The steady beginning now of Firing Line. Keep fighting. And this is Winnie Monsod of the University of the Philippines. And I'm just going to say Happy Easter to all of you. Happy Easter. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you.